Hello, I'm Svetlin Naku from Softuni, the Software University. I'm here for the next part of my free Java Basics coding tutorial, which is a series of video lessons with hands-on coding exercises for absolute beginners. If you missed the previous parts, please review them first to catch up. In this lesson, I will talk about variables and data types, such as strings, integer numbers, floating point numbers, booleans, and others. Also statements which define the commands in the program and the most used arithmetic operators like plus, minus, multiply, divide, divide and remainder and the expressions in Java or how to combine operators with values and functions to implement a calculation. As usually, I will show you how to solve several coding problems and how to submit your solution in the judge system for automated grading. Don't skip the coding exercises at the end of these lessons. They give you practical skills and coding experience. To learn coding, you should code. That's it. Let's start. Let's learn how to use data and calculations in Java. Let's start with variables. In programming, variables are used to store and process data in the computer memory. Variables are named memory areas which hold data of certain type, like number or text or something else. Let's learn more about them now. So how does computing work generally? Computers are machines, computational machines that process data. So both program instructions and data are stored in the computer memory. Program instructions are stored in some location of the computer memory and data is stored in another location in the computer memory and data is split into uh, places which have names and which hold certain values. Data in programming is stored using variables, which means that each variable may have a name and may have a value and location in the memory just like the walkers in the dressing room. So walkers in the dressing room have uh, names and have also some kind of labels or numbering or some way to uh, locate and differentiate between them. So in computer memory we may have a variable which holds some data and have some name and accessing the uh, by, by the name gives us the, the value stored in the variable. Just like opening a walker with certain names gives the uh, properties and belongings, belongings to someone who uses this walker. So variables have names and hold something and they have location in the computer memory and we can consider a computer memory just like a series of walkers uh, which holds something. So, a variable is a container for information. It's a named area of the computer memory which holds something. The data can be read and can be changed at any time. This is where the RAM comes from. R-A-M, Random Access Memory, RAM. So, variables provide means for storing data so you can change or put something in a place in a variable in the computer memory, you can retrieve the data which is previously stored in a variable or you can modify existing stored, previously stored data. So variables in programming are characterized by name. For example, the name could be age or student name or size or a list of students or something like this. It may have type variables, usually have type. In some languages, they don't have type, but the, the time depends on the value and they have value. So, for example, we can have a variable called age, which is of type int, integer value, and it holds a value of 25. Or we can have a variable called name, which is of type string or text, and it holds the value Peter. And we can have a variable uh, named size, which is of size uh, of type double decimal number with, with double precision, and it may hold a value like 3.50.
So defining a variable in Java usually comes together with initialization and it consists of this. We declare the data type, then the variable name, and then we assign a value. So before going further, let's look how this works in the, in the, in the practice. I will create a new project which will be called, for example, variables, for example, because the name of the project should answer the question what's inside. So this is my project. It holds the source code with some main class. And here I can put some variables, for example, int x equals 25. And I can print this variable x and I can define and this works as usually, you already know how this works. It will print 25 on the console. Uh, but I can also declare more variables, just like uh, string name. And I can assign it later. For example, name equals to Peter. Now I can print the name. And later I can assign in the name another person, for example, Mariah. And I can print the name again. So this is how this works. It will print first 25, then Peter, then Mariah. So if I use the debugger and uh, say debug main after putting this red breakpoint, we can see the variables here. So variables usually have some ID, some label, like labels in the walker or some location in the memory. Uh, it's not necessary to be a location, but it's a unique identifier which maps to unique uh, location in the memory. So I have now uh, this uh, x25 uh, and name which is Peter and also name is now Mariah. It's a complex object which holds an uh, uh, array of five bytes at certain location 811. And this is another location, 808. Uh, by the way, this string args is also a variable which is used to, to pass parameters to your console-based program. Uh, so this is how it works. Variables hold values. And these values, after declaration, uh, can be changed. And you can also use, instead of int, you can use far. And then the type of the variable is identified by the rise, by the compiler from the right power here. So here x will be of type int. You can mm, check this. It is, uh, hmm, it is int, but it's not clear that this is int. But we can, if we say 25.0, this uh, will be x will be of type double. Let me see, show you this. It is of type double, value of a primitive type double. And this is a value of type array. We will learn about arrays later. So this is what I wanted to show you about variables. They have name, type, and may hold value of this type in Java. Variables cannot change their name at runtime. For example, if we have x, we cannot say x equals to hello. This may work in, in Python and JavaScript, but here it's, we have a variable of type double because this is double and this var assumes the, the type from the, uh, from the value. But we try to assign a string and these types are not directly compatible. So this will give us an error. This is how variables work in Java. They cannot change their type. And in some languages, variables can change their types like Python and JavaScript in the so-called scripting languages. So defining variable in Java usually comes together with initialization. And you define the data type, the variable name, and the variable value. And of course, you cannot use the same name twice because uh, this is ambiguous. Variable x is already defined, so the compiler doesn't know uh, if you want to use this x or this x. So names should be unique. 
okay, that's about the variables, let's continue. In this section, I'll give you a brief explanation of data types in programming and how they work in Java. I will mention the number types like int and double, the text type or string, and the character type char and the boolean type. And of course, I will demonstrate you these types in live coding examples. So data types are related to what kind of data we store in a variable. Variables always store values of certain types. Variables in Java have type and values also have type. So we can uh, assign in a variable of certain type a value of the same type or compatible type. For example, in a variable of type double, we can assign either double or int, but we cannot assign string. So variables can be numbers, letters, strings, texts. Uh, it can be date or color or picture or list or of customers, for example, or uh, video or, or some kind of data or objects. So data types in Java can be primitive types like int, float, double boolean, or some more complex types like string, like array, like list. We'll mention all of them. So data types can be one of the simplest types is int. It holds integers like one, two, three. Let me show you. So if I have int x equals 25 and I can print this, this number here and this works as expected. Uh, strings, ints can have a range. For example, you cannot store this because this is out of range. It's too large. But basically, uh, the int range is enough for most numbers. It's between minus two million, billions uh, to two billions nearly. Uh, if you want to have bigger ranges, you may use long integer like this, and it may have bigger scope. Uh, but you should put L suffix here to, to explain the compiler that this is a long value, not int value. So I can run this program and it will work correctly. I can even uh, add one and this will work with five at the end. So double is a floating point number. And if we have double value, uh, we can have 3.5, for example. And uh, when we print it, it will be printed as expected. We may have more uh, digits after decimal point. And it can be positive or negative. It can be close to zero, for example, like, uh, like this one, for example. And sometimes double can make some um, incorrect calculations, but we'll talk about this later in, in the next course, Child Foundations. So here we see that this is printed, this number will strange. It is printed in the so-called scientific notation, which means that this number is multiplied by, by 10 by 10 raised to the power of 7 by 10 to the power of 7. This means uh, minus 7 means uh, that we have this number Uh, divided to the 10 to the power of 7. Minus 7 means divide by 7 or plus 7 means multiply by 7. So this is a, so the so-called scientific notation. It is used for very large numbers or numbers which are very close to 0, like this one. It will just say, uh, change the magnitude of uh, this number, not the number itself. So this allows us for in, to keep in double very small numbers, like very close to zero numbers like this. So another uh, type is Boolean. If we have Boolean x equals, it can be either true or false and nothing else. True or false. It can never be something different. Uh, you cannot assign, for example, uh, minus five 
it's uh, impossible and it's all either true or false char is holds a symbol for example uh, character for example uh, like a the letter a you can see this or the letter for example dollar and it's it's always uh, typed in single quotes like this uh, and if we use x plus one this will give the next le letter after this ah but it is in, as, a, as a number because uh, char can be transferred to a number by by the plus sign so if i make a cast like this i can get the, the next number after this for example after a the next uh, the next letter will be b this is how this works so i can print x and the next letter after x this is a kind of uh, this consists of type casting and expression calculation so if i have mm, we, we can have um, letters from different alphabets for example this letter is from the cyrillic alphabet it's called ya in russia and in bulgaria and we may have other uh, letters like this one for example this question mark and the next is this one and we may have emoticons and other uh, let me try to to find something it's not always easy to find a le uh, such a known letter also letters cannot be empty they can hold space but they cannot be empty strings can be empty strings are sequences of letters for example uh, hello and they should be put in double quotes and it's string with capital because this is a class this is not primitive type it's a class and you cannot do this calculation like this uh, but you can uh, print the string we'll have another lesson devoted to strings in the next uh, java foundations training course but be patient so we can mm, work with letters like this we can uh, concatenate with strings or with with other text and also strings can also hold empty value like this or strings can be no no means that there is no nothing in the string x equals to x plus hello now because it is no it will uh, tell no it will append no and hello uh, because this is how it works it's it's always it's in most cases it is good to hold empty string if you want to have a value but it is possible for it to be empty and also we can have uh, some mm, strings like this i'll show you for example salam alaikum sorry if it is not the correct Salam assalam alaikum. Maybe this is the correct pronunciation. Sorry, I don't speak Arabian, but but basically uh, you can hold these letters and they also uh, work from from right to left. So see, I, I move the cursor on the left, on the right, 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 and see what happens. It works. Uh, it it may run sometimes it it runs the opposite direction ah no the, the the direction here is is given but basically you can use uh other languages like arabic like uh, chinese korean etc 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 okay so this is how strings work and strings hold sequence of characters they can be empty zero or can be several letters or they have they usually hold some text for example the username of a person or the 
bio of the person or a website URL. All these are examples of string. Data types define ranges of values with similar, similar characteristics. For example, uh, the int, int type is from minus two, bi two billions until two billions. Uh, I believe I'll find this in the documentation somewhere. And this is the max value, but this is in a hexadecimal format. Is It is like this minus two raised to the power of 31. And this is two raised to the power of 31 minus one. This is the maximum value. So you can find it in in internet, for example, uh, Java int range, and this is the the range of Java of uh, strings. Uh, it is it is given somewhere from this until this. Okay, so data types are characterized by three thing, things, name, size, and default value in Java. In Java, for example, the data type name can be boolean in string, and if it is with a small letter, it is built-in or a primitive type, and if it is with a capital letter like this string, it is a class or it is a complex object, it's not primitive. Um, Primitive types stay in the stack and uh, complex uh, types stay in the heap and we'll talk, discuss this later. Uh, there are, some are passed by value, others by reference, but we'll talk about this later as I already explained. And they have size, how many bytes in the memory they use. For example, int uses four bytes and the type wong uses eight bytes. And the type string uses variable number of bytes. For example, it uses four bytes for the length, for the length, plus two multiplied by the number of letters for to hold the, the letters or the, the characters inside the string. And they have default value, which means that if you don't uh, explicitly assign a value. The value will be zero for uh, the primitive types, false, false for booleans, and also um, no for strings. In programming, statements hold commands in the computer programs, a step from the program's algorithm. Let's talk more about them. Statements are actions that program takes. They are expressed as statements in the programming languages such as Java or Python. And we may have many kinds of statements, but basic statements, or we can call them actions or commands, they include some basic operations which you can make in your program. Uh, for example, deque declaring a variable, you can say int counter, which declares a simple variable. I will make an example and counter. So if I just declare the, the, the variable uh, here, um, I cannot directly print it because it's not initialized, but this is another story. So I can have another uh, command or statement which says count equals please assign to the count to the counter, the value uh, of five, and finally print it. So this is a statement, this is also a statement, and this is also a statement. These are simple statements, declaring a variable, assigning a value, or declaring and, declaring and initializing a value on the same line, like this, which is quite more readable and quite more efficient. Uh, you, you type less code. So printing a value is also a kind of statement. It's a function call statement or method call statement. And modifying a value like uh, 
counter plus plus, for example, is also a statement. Or we can say that counter equals to two times counter plus one. For example, we can put some spacing to improve the readability, but basically this is a statement, declaration statement. This is a, another statement, calculation of expression plus assignment. And this is a printing statement. We call the function println and we pass a parameter what to print to this function. And this is another uh, example, sum equals to a plus b. These are called simple or basic statements, basic, uh, um, very basic actions or commands in your program. In programming, we may have more complex statements, like, for example, the if-else statement. Uh, for example, I can say if counter equals 5, then print the uh, word 5. Otherwise, uh, print opa, uh, as out the, the number it is not 5 for example, okay? And when I run this, it will tell, tell me it's five. If it is 15, it will not be five. And this complex statement will give me something. So I have a complex statement. This is the first statement, and this is the complex statement. It consists of if, expression, another statement, else, another statement. So a statement can internally hold other statements inside, just like this one. The this method main holds a sequence of statements. This is the first statement, and this is the second statement. We may have third statement here, for example, like this. Okay. So another statement is the whoop statement. It's more complex because we repeat a piece of code like this. For example, I can say, while counter is bigger than zero, please execute these statements, print the counter and decrement the counter. So this is the first statement. This is the second statement. It consists of while whoop, which checks a condition, and if this condition is true, it executes this first statement, then the second statement, and repeats this again. So this will print the numbers from 15 down to 1 in a whoop. This is called whoop statement. We'll have a separate lesson about if else and conditional statements and more complex conditional statements and also we'll have another uh, lesson about whoops. And another more complex statement, as an example, is the method definition statement. So we can do like this, static with... Assume that we always put static, someday we'll explain why. But uh, this is the return type, int or maybe wong sum of int a and int p. And this return a plus p. So this is a method declaration statement, a method sum which takes two input variables a and p and returns their sum. It's a, in mathematics it is called a function, function which sums two numbers. So I can say that int sum equals to mm, sum of 3 plus 5, or maybe it will be s, wonk s, and I will print s. So this is the first statement. Please, just like we call system out print when, we can call sum, and this sum invokes this uh, method. So we have this declaration, this is the first statement, and this is the second statement. And this is another statement which defines a function which holds sequence of statements. Currently we have only one statement, return a plus b.
and it works as expected. This is how we use the method called statements and there are many other statements like the switch case statement, like the uh, other whoop statements or class declaration statements or uh, interface declaration statements and many, many others. So statements are like sentences in the natural language. In the national, natural language, if we want to write an essay, uh, we put a sequence of, of uh, sentences. In programming, if we, we want to write a, a program or procedure, we use a sequence of statements. So it's very similar. Programming languages are similar to natural languages and we have simple statements or basic statements and complex statements like this one. Let's talk a little bit about the operators in Java and more precisely about the arithmetic operators which implement arithmetic calculations. I will explain the operator plus for adding numbers, minus for subtracting uh, numbers, asterisk for multiplying numbers and swash for dividing numbers and percentage for calculating the remainder of division, the module. So let's start with adding numbers, which are uh, which is the simplest operation. It is implemented through the operator plus, like this. So if we have two variables, uh, a holding 5 and b holding 7, we can say, please calculate the sum of a plus b and store this in the sum variable and print it, and it will be 12. I will demonstrate this uh, here just to clean up my code to empty some space and int a equals 5 and b equals 7 so int sum equals a plus b this plus means sum of two numbers if we have numbers if we have some something which is not a number it may mean something different uh, and when i print the sum it will be of course as expected 12. Okay, so subtracting numbers is done by the operator minus and it works very similarly. If we have 15 minus 7, it will be 8. And it works, of course, with negative numbers. 5 minus 7 will be minus 2 because this is how mathematics works. And nothing strange or interesting here. It also works not only for ints, but also for doubles. If we have double and uh, the uh, result should also be used double. You cannot store the difference between two doubles in a, in a normal int. But you can subtract, subtract int from double. So a is 5.34 minus 7 which is int. This operation is valid because this will be first transformed to double like this and then will be subtracted. So this is the result. Uh, this is the booking in the Java uh, floating point calculations. I will talk about these kinds of problems uh, when we talk about later uh, about big decimal class in the Java Foundations course but for the moment you can mm, deal with this like using formatting point.2f uh, print f and this will work uh, better like, like this and now the rounding errors will not be the problem okay so the next are the multiplying numbers operator uh, asterisk and also the division multiplying is nothing it's not much interesting so if we have int a equals 5 and b 7 if we multiply them uh, will 
will obtain the their product 35 we store this in double so it's 35.0 if we store this in int it will work but it's more correct to hold this in one because if these ints are big they will not the result main overflow the the sum so if we have uh, numbers like this and if we use sum the result might be incorrect like this one this is due to overflow but we'll talk about overflows maybe later and to achieve the correct result we can do like this we first go to long then multiply and the result is long and now the result is correct okay and division operator is always integral division which means for example 25 if we divide it by 4 uh, d equals to a divided by b okay so this is how this works 6 6 by 4 6 multiplied by 4 is 24 okay but it's 25 this, uh, divided by 4. This is uh, the so-called integral division. Uh, but if one of the arguments is double, the result will also be a double. And this will be a floating point division. So division might be integral when we divide int by int. And floating point when we divide, uh, this is an integral division. And when we divide by mm, floating points like this, when we divide by 4.0, it will be 6.25. And also I should mention that in integral division, if we divide by zero, we'll get an exception. It's called, uh, sorry, it's double, mm, but in int, this is a uh, divide by zero exception arithmetic exception which says design divide by zero and if we have floating point numbers for example 25 uh, and we have a floating point division we'll have if it is normal we'll have the the result but if we divide by zero we'll receive a special number called infinity and infinity is very special because if we multiply, uh, for example, d equals to d plus 1, infinity plus 1, and infinity multiplied by 5 stays, is the infinity itself. So this is how this works, infinity. Infinity plus 1 is also infinity because if we have infinite number of apples for example and we want one more apple it will sti still be will be the infinity this is how the abstract number infinity works so we may have also uh, not a number if we divide zero by zero it will be a special constant called not a number or invalid number so double works differently it always succeeds when you have arithmetic operations, but sometimes the result is infinity, minus infinity, or not a number. Okay, so be careful. Finally, I'll talk about uh, the most complex, maybe, arithmetic operator called percentage or re module or reman remainder. It calculates the remainder from integer division. I'll show you how this works. If we divide 7 by 2, we have 7 divide, to divide by 2 is 3 and 1 as a remainder because 3 multiplied by 2 is 6 and 6 plus this 1 remainder gives the source number 7. So this is how the module works in, in mathematics, in, in integral computations. So the module here is one. This is the remainder, uh, the, yes, the remainder from the division. And seven is three multiplied by two, two times the result is two. 
uh, the division result and the remainder is 1 and 3 multiplied by 2 6 plus 1 is equal to 7. Similarly if we divide 37 by 10 the result will be 3 because it's 3 times 10 plus 7 and this is 37. So this is the remainder and this is the uh, result from the division. Let, let's say D. And I already explained how this works. 4% 2 is 0 because there is no divider. 4 can be directly divided by 2. And this can work also with uh, floating point numbers. If we divide 3.5 by 1, we'll have 3 and 0.5 is a uh, remainder. So let me show you how this works. If we have int num equals to 15 or 1 or 1 157, we can divide num percent 10. This will be the last digit because it will be 15 the integral part plus 7 the uh, the module the remainder par part okay so this is how this last calculates and if we have one for example 3.5 or maybe 7 divided mm, double 7 divided by 2 will be this but 7.5 will be the remainder will be will be 1.5 and if we divide by a uh, non-integral volume okay it might work differently but yeah that, that's about the arithmetic operators you can play with them during the exercises let's talk about expressions in java Expressions are calculations which include values, operators, function calls, brackets and other elements that evaluate to certain value. For example, uh, we can have an expression like this int y equals to x plus 5, for example, and this is an expression expression which is a kind of calculation a kind like in mathematics we have expressions like 5 plus 7 or 1 divided to brackets 1 plus 7 so uh, we can consider that expressions are sequences of operators literals and variables which are ev evaluated to a value literals are sequences of characters that uh, express certain value. So we have string literals, uh, we have uh, number literals, integer literals and others. So expressions consist of, of, of at least one operand or value or um, something uh, and can use one or more operators which combine the operands. For example, this expression is the right part is a calculation and this part here is an assignment so we have a uh, the, we have here an expression and we have here an assignment and here we have a, a variable declaration so this uh, statement here it's a combination of many things of assignment of a declaration of variable and of expression calculation of expression so this is another kind of expression John Doe in uh, quotes it's an expression of type string this is a string and this is an expression of type int it is integer and we may have expressions of different types for example an expression of type student for example so this is another example of expression which includes brackets, uh, some operators, some uh, operands uh, and literals. So literals are things like this 150. This is an integer literal. This is a string literal. This is a variable uh, and this combination 
uh, brackets, uh, literals, operators, variables, function calls, calls, etc. This is called expression. So we use expressions to perform calculations in Java and in programming in, ger in general. So let me uh, show you some examples. I will run my IntelliJ idea because I stopped it and I will open my last project uh, just to, to, to type some expressions to you and to give you more details. So where is my IntelliJ idea? It's still it's still starting. Oh, it is here. Uh, so if I have, for example, double, uh, for example, x equals 5.3, and I can have, uh, for example, print x divided by 2. This is an expression. So it will first make this calculation and later it will print it. But I can have a more complex calculation like x plus 1 divided by 2. This is another expression, this. Uh, the return type here is double. If I have var uh, result equals to this one, and if I print the result, this result will be of type double. Why? Because the expression is of type double. So we can do this, and I can even cast change the type of this expression. So this is an operator to change the type. I have in brackets the new type and I can change the time between numbers and between some other, let's say, compatible types. Okay, so expressions have a, a type. For example, if I have hello plus this expression, this part is double, but this part is string. And when we combine string with double, the result will be string. Now result is of type string. It is var, which means that take the type from the last part. And this is how expressions work. They can also include some function calls like math.sqrt, please calculate a square root of x plus 1 divided by 2. This is something like, like this one. x plus 1 divided by 2. This is a, a mathematical expression. And plus hello. And now when I run this, I'll have another result. This is the, the calculated expression. So this is how expressions work in general. Now it's time for the hands-on exercises because we want to learn skills, not just talk or watch video lessons. Follow the exercises, solve the practical problems and send your solutions to the church system for automated trading. You will find the problem descriptions and the link to the church in the lesson uh, materials and slides which we publish at softunit.org. Let's do the exercises, let's code, let's solve some practical problems. It's important that you learn by doing. To learn coding, you need to write code. No other way. Write code, run the code, test the code, make mistakes, fix the mistakes, run the code again, test again, find other mistakes and repeat until you are ready. Finally, submit your code in the judge. Maybe it will have other mistakes or not. Resubmit it, fix them, etc., etc., etc. This is how you learn coding by practice, by coding. The only way to learn coding is by coding. So watching videos give you all, gives you only knowledge, not skills. To learn skills, you should practice. Watching uh, videos how someone uh, is skiing, for example, cannot. Um, allow you to learn how to ski. It's skill, it's not knowledge. The same is with, with math, with programming and, with, and many others. So solving the hands-on exercises with these lessons gives you the experience and practical skills. 
you should write code, you should solve exercises and our training courses are designed to acquire skills and to get a job someday. So write and submit the coding exercises. Let's start with the first exercise. It's about writing a program to convert from US dollars to Euro at a fixed rate. So we first read the floating point number, the dollars to be converted. Then we convert the dollars to Euro uh, by a fixed rate of 0.88. And we finally print the converted value in Euro formatted to the second digit after the decimal point. So this is an example. We have 17, we multiply it by uh, 0.88 and the result is this one. This is another example. Okay, let's solve this. I will open the IntelliJ idea. First, let me find it. Where is it? Okay, and I'll create a new class which will be called USD to Euro. USD to Euro. For example, this is a good name for this class because it answers the question what inside. So we create the static void main and we first create a scanner which will be used to read our input. Uh, it is new scanner of system.in. Then I will read the dollars, something like double dollars equals to scanner dot next double next double and I need to fix this. Then I will calculate the euro euro as the dollars multiplied by 0 0.88 we assume the the rate is fixed uh, because we still don't know how to um, implement a web service uh, call request to to take the real rate from somewhere and we just print this euro and when i start this with right click and run uh, I can say that for 70 is 14.96. I have the judge, the judge system, and I can use this judge system to submit my code. And this is what you are invited to do. Copy this code or control C and paste it here, control V. And I click submit. It takes some time. I refresh. Maybe I wait a little bit more and looks like it doesn't work correctly. I don't know why, but maybe I forgot to 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 this two digits after the decimal point. So I should have print f of percent dot to f and with a new line at the end, and this is my uh, my solution which is improved and if i have some wrong number the output will be formatted up to two digits after the decimal point okay now i will submit again control v submit and after a few seconds i will refresh now my solution is correct it has passed successfully all these five tests which are uh, put in the judge okay let's continue with the next problem this is just a solution uh it's called four operations we need to write a program which reads two real numbers from the console and performs four arithmetic operations uh on the uh, two, these two numbers in the following order, order plus minus multiplication division and the output should be like this. If we have 5 and 10, we should print 5 plus 10 equals 15. 5 minus 10 equals minus 5. So we always use two decimal points after the, the decimal, two, two digits after the decimal point. And, and that's all. It's, it's not quite complex. 
uh, in fact, I can clone this this uh, this solution like this. Control C, Control V, and I copy the entire class because the this problem is similar to the previous one, but the name is for operations, okay, and. I have another class called for operations. I have already the scanner uh, and I will have the first number, which is eight, A, for example, the second is B, or maybe I use better num one and num two, num two. And I can print something like num one plus num2 equals to some other number and something like num1 and num2 and the sum num1 plus num2 okay let's see whether this works correctly or not i'll run this and if i have 5 plus 10 5 plus 10 equals 5 equals 15 works correctly and i need to implement the other operations the same way so if i have minus i'll have minus here as well if i have multiply i'll have the multiply here as well and if i have division here i'll have division here and let me check whether this works or not five and ten hmm whoops like this is similar to this so I can open the judge and submit my code just to check whether it is correct or it's not. Copy and I go here, I put paste and I submit it. Submission is sent and I will wait a bit. Looks like it's correct. So we can continue with the next uh, solution this is uh, the same thing which i already wrote the code so we go to the next problem the next problem is called market and it works uh, it's as follows a farmer sells tomatoes and cucumbers at the market the fruit market so you need to write a java program to calculate the total cost of uh, the farmer's production by given quantities and prices so we are given the following how much the tomato costs the price of tomatoes the quantity of tomatoes the cucumbers price and the cucumber quantity so if we multiply this and we also multiply this if we multiply the to tomato price by the quantity we will find how many uh dollars the tomato costs and the cucumbers the same way and if we sum this we'll can we'll find the total cost okay so this is an example so if we multiply this two numbers and we multiply these two numbers and we sum these two outputs we'll find this so this is the multiplication of these two the second is the multiplication of these two and the sum is the sum of these two above looks quite easy i will again copy these four operations control c control v i click on the left on the class name and now i will give a name market because this is the solution of the market problem i read the tomato price and the tomato quantity then i will copy these two lines and we'll have cucumber price oh it's wrongly uh, written okay and i will have 
something like uh, var uh, tomato cost equals to tomato price multiplied by tomato quantity and cucumber cost equals to cucumber price multiplied by cucumber quantity and total cost equals to tomato cost plus cucumber cost and finally I need to print it just to check in which format I should print it. Oh, I should print something like this. 140. Okay, the first I should print. I can print like this. Uh, print uh, the price, tomato cost, plus the plus sign. And in the same way, was the cucumber cost equals two, and finally I print the total cost Be because total. Sorry, because I want to print the tomato cost and the sign plus then the this cucumber cost followed by the sign equals and then the final sum and they should be formatted with two uh, points after the decimal uh, two, two decimal digits after the decimal point so i will use print f and we'll have something like person taught to f plus tomato cost looks like I need to rewrite my code and this is quite normal uh, sometimes we uh, write the code and we find the mistake and we fix the mistake it's quite normal process uh, when you when you are coding equals uh, maybe I forgot the new line here percent and person and and person and and this is the total cost and let me check whether this works or not uh, if i have i'll take this example 42.5 then 3.30 then 60.8 and then 1.80 and i have 140.25 109 Point forty-four equals O equals the total cost. Looks like we need to this again. I will copy this because I don't want to type it again. Enter two four nine point sixty-nine. Hmm. Looks correct. And now I can go in the church, open the third problem market and submit it like this it takes some time for processing but my solution is correct okay i solved the market uh, assignment and let's go to the next this is a simple solution which is quite similar to what i already demonstrated and the next problem is called tiles tiles we have a rectangular bathroom like this one and we want to cover it by tiles tiles are smaller than the bathroom you know because you maybe you, you have a bathroom at home and it's usually covered by tiles and these tiles are arranged one to another and we want to cover of types of smaller size for example if this is 5 by 2 meters, it's 10 meters, for example, and this is uh, 0 0.3 by 0 0.4, this is the size of the tile. Okay, so we want to calculate how many tiles we'll need to do this covering 
and we usually add a 10% uh, extra tiles surplus uh, and we want to run to the nearest integer because if you want to go at the uh, store we want to mm, tell the, the seller how many tiles we need so we usually need enough tiles to cover this plus some surplus because some tiles uh, can be broken or you always need more tiles than required to have something as a reserve as an additional um, availability okay so how to calculate this if we calculate the area and if we calculate the uh, tile size and if we multiply the area uh, plus 10 percent or we multiply which is multiplied by 1.10 okay uh, we will calculate the area it's given here so the area of the bathroom is 3.3 meters by 2.2 meters which uh, its area is 7.26 when we add 10% surplus, we'll get 7.986 uh, square meters. Let's assume it's meters. It could be inches or uh, foot or something else, but square meters works well. And the tau area is when we multiply this two. This is the tau area. And when we divide the this area to the tau area we'll get how many tiles we'll need we'll need 42.592 and we need to round this up how to round this up is something we didn't learn so mm, you can mm, search it in the internet i will not solve this problem because i want to leave it for you uh, but i'll give you some hints so you can read the room width and height and we can multiply them to calculate the room area and in the similar way you can read and calculate the tau area and when you multiply the room area by 1.1 this is the area plus uh, additional reserve of 10 persons and when you divide this to the tau area you will find exactly how many tiles you will need, but this will be a um, floating point number. It will it will not be an integer. So you can round up like this. Your um, it's it's rounded, not not up. But for example, if it is thirty five point one, it will be thirty five. If it is 35.5, it will be 36. If it is 35.83, it will be also 36. This is called in mathematics rounding, and this is the natural rounding of the numbers. Okay, so this is how we can round numbers. Another way is to go in Google and to look at, at this. For example, I can uh, open a new uh, tab and write Java round uh, double twin. Huh. And in Stack Overflow, you can see that the answer might be like this. Math.round, there is a built-in method and you should then cast to int. Another way is what I have used. I add 0 0.5 and then truncate to the uh, only the integral part, the int part. And there are some other solutions which are quite uh, different, but math.round works well. And there are some other solutions, etc., etc., etc. You can open some kind of. Uh, mm, other solutions etc etc mat.round uh, so this is how it it can work 
Okay, so this is the final problem for you and I highly recommend that you solve this problem and yourself <laughs> without just copy paste my code. And also I highly recommend that you submit it in the judge and if you open the results you should have 400 for 100 points for each of the, of the problems. Okay, so remember that the most important activity in learning how to code is the coding. If you don't code, you will not have skills. If you just watch these videos, you will get some information, but you will not have the skills. For example, to learn how to drive a car, you should drive a car. You should learn some theory, but then you should practice. It's the same with programming. So maybe I repeated myself several times, but it is tremendously important to do and submit your exercises and to practice what you have learned today, to develop it as a skill, not just as a theory. So do your exercises. Did you like this code lesson? Do you want more? Join the learners community at softunit.org. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more free videos, tutorials on computer programming, Java, software engineering, and many others. Get free access to the practical coding exercises and the automated judge system for these code lessons to uh, evaluate your code from the exercises you write. Get help from the mentors and meet other learners. We, uh, we will answer your questions. And it's all free, completely free. So join now.